So the Elitus S by Big Big One. Now, I was a little bit skeptical when I got the email from Big Big One, but then I realized I was kind of judging a book by its cover. Now, I will say I would recommend that they change their name specifically for the North American market, i.e. the United States. A lot of people will see that name and associate it with some kind of cheap Chinese chintzy controller. And that really isn't the case. This is the best Switch Pro controller I've ever used and definitely one of the most ergonomic and comfortable PC controllers as well. I did get this paired up to the PS5 via Bluetooth, more on that later. This also does work with Android as well as iOS as long as you have the latest firmware patch. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, over here at the Stormtrooper desktop, if you're new to the channel, this is where we do our unboxings, custom controller builds, and a whole lot of other fun stuff. So the packaging and included accessories, you get this nice little pretty box here, a little holographic logo there. I have to say, cosmetically, it looks really good. You don't get any laser cut foam or anything like that, but that's to be expected in an entry level controller. You do get a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, which is used for wireless connection to the PC, as well as Android devices with an adapter. You get this instruction manual here, which goes along with that kind of peach orange theme. And it does guide you through the different connections connection methods for PC, Switch, as well as Android devices. In order to get it working on iOS, you will need to go on their website. The latest firmware patch does allow it to be used on an iOS device, however. However, it basically renames it to be recognized via Bluetooth on the iOS as a Xbox wireless controller, and you're able to connect it that way. You have a little QC card here, letting it know that it did pass quality control. You do have a warranty card. You do get a one year, I almost said one month. That'd be a real short warranty. You do get a one year warranty right here. Uh, you have their socials down here if you need to reach out to them for any kind of assistance as well as a support email. It is monitored. I did test it and they did respond to me pretty quickly. You do have a uh, micro USB cable here. Would have been nice to see USB-C, but not a huge deal. Pretty good quality cable. It does have a uh, Velcro tie back here. It is rather short though, so if you are gonna be using this wired as you can play this wired to the PC, it does also work Bluetooth and with the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Uh, more on that during the compatibility section of this video. But it would have been nice to have a little bit longer and USB-C cable. Not a huge deal there, though. Let's go ahead and clear up some desk space, shall we? All right, so the Elitus S here by Big Big Juan. As you see, I'm controlling Steam Big Picture back there behind me on the PC. And i got to say, this is ergonomically very, very comfortable. It is uh, almost identical to a Switch Pro controller, which is one of my favorite controllers, honestly. I think it might actually be a little bit more ergonomically correct for me than an Xbox One slash Series controller, which are freakishly comfortable. But... There's some things I really, really do like about this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off so I'm not controlling my PC back there. First of all, analog sticks have a good resistance, good travel, and also they do have uh, anti-friction rings in there, which means when you're at full lock, instead of scraping against rough plastic, it has this very, very smooth plastic to where you can uh, glide along. I really do like that a whole heck of a lot. Also, the face buttons. Instead of having a membrane style, nope, I just turned it back on. Okay, let's just unplug you so I don't keep connecting to my PC. Um, these face buttons here, for one, they're very spaced out, which is awesome because instead of <laughs> a lot of controllers where you can cover all four of the, the face buttons with just your thumb here, which you can technically do that if you're purposely trying to do that, but they're spaced out very, very well. They're also rather large in comparison to something like the PlayStation 5 DualSense. And also they have a good feeling to them. They're not quite mechanical like some of the Razer controllers, which are also quite a bit more expensive but they do feel a lot better than traditional membrane buttons like you get on a Xbox controller that basically have that rubber plunger mechanism at the bottom that feel kind of squishy. This has a nice like crisp tactile feeling to it. Just feels good. You do have all of your standard Nintendo Switch controls, minus, plus, and a home button down here. You do have a pairing button on top, which is how you're going to put it into either wireless 2.4 mode or Bluetooth mode if you are going to be connecting this wirelessly to a Switch or PlayStation 5. We'll talk about that in a little bit there. There's partial compatibility, I would say. Bumpers ergonomically feel really good. Triggers feel fantastic. They have a very, very short pull. So obviously this won't work for like racing games where you need a lot of modulation in the throttle or anything like that, as it is basically an on-off switch, uh, which is great for shooters if you're trying to shoot a semi-automatic weapon quickly or whatnot. And then the material, I really do like. It's kind of a rubberized soft touch material, which feels really, really good in the hand. You do have your four LEDs down here, which will show you which uh, player you are assigned to. And then in the back, you do have programmable paddles, which I have to say 
are pretty awesome. So there's only two paddles. If I use a paddle controller, I prefer to have four, but I know a lot of people use two. Even on a four paddle controller, they remove two of them because they only need two. Now I will say, these are ergonomically some of the best paddles I've used as they are up and out of the way. So you never accidentally actuate them. And they also have a good resistance to where I've never uh, a single time accidentally pressed them. And then if you want to remove them completely, you can by pressing this little eject lever right here. And they just pop right out like that. And you are able to get uh, access to your serial number and some information right there. Uh, however, I would just keep these in as they are, like I said, pretty awesome. They do work on the PC and they just have a nice crisp tactile feel to them. I like them a whole heck of a lot. Now, if you ever do need to disassemble this controller for any reason, i.e. you're gonna be doing some customizing, maybe some hydro dipping, there is six Phillips head screws in the back shell there and that will allow you to separate the front and rear shell. I'm sure the manufacturer does not recommend that you do that. Let's go ahead and peel off this tape here. Might get a little ASMR clip for you guys. Hmm. So not that you'll be touching that very much as it is on the top, but that is piano black, which means that will collect a lot of fingerprints and potentially scratches. But everything else is kind of a flat matte material, which I have to say not only looks good, feels good, but it also uh, won't really show any fingerprints or anything. Now this does work on PC, three different methods. I have tried all three. There is connected via USB. And like I said, it is a short cable. However, if you're playing on PC, you're probably really close. And then you can connect via Bluetooth. If you hold down the pair button for a few seconds, you will get a flashing status indicator on the bottom there. Keep holding it and it'll start flickering real fast like that. And you are able to connect via Bluetooth, however, uh, for the PC, I would recommend using that dongle. For one, it is really small, so even if you have it on the front of your tower, it's not gonna be uh, too ugly or anything like that. But also, a 2.4 gigahertz connection is usually a lot quicker and more consistent than Bluetooth. And now that I have that dongle plugged in, all I need to do is press the pair button, it'll flash for a minute, and then illuminate the, uh, it'll illuminate the front two LEDs like that, which lets you know that you are paired to your uh, 2.4 gigahertz dongle. So as for connecting to Android devices, you have the same three methods as on the PC. You can wirelessly connect via Bluetooth or that 2.4 gigahertz dongle. However, in order to use the dongle, obviously you will need an adapter, which would be USB-C or micro USB, depending on what, uh, I guess, the model year you have of Android, and then plug the dongle into the bottom of that. But I think for mobile gaming, Bluetooth is probably the option you're gonna take, and you will see it pop up uh, when it is in Bluetooth discoverable mode as the Elitis S. Now, as for iOS or iPhone pairing, there is no instructions in the manual, as I do believe that feature came out after this uh, product was originally created. However, with the latest firmware update, it does give you iOS capability, so that means uh, iPhones and iPads. You will need to install the latest firmware, which I do have the direct link to the firmware update in the description below, and then it will actually rename the controller to be called uh, Xbox Wireless. So that way the iPhone is compatible with that um, as it is not out of the box compatible with this controller. Alrighty guys, so this bad boy does not work with the Xbox One Series S or X. I have tried it wired with the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And then the PlayStation 5, I did try uh, wired 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And then with Bluetooth, you can not only recognize this controller, you can connect it. It is showing as connected. It's showing as connected in the Bluetooth accessories. However, there is no controllability over it. Generally, when this happens, when you are able to pair a controller to a PlayStation, um, it is only a matter of time before either the developer or a third party programmer comes up with some kind of script update firmware patch that you can install directly into the controller where you are able to use it. So I definitely think it is possible to use this on a PlayStation 5. Uh, probably the script's out there on the internet now or it will be in the near future. I kind of hope that it is the actual developer, Big Big One, that does... That's kind of fun to say, actually. That does come up with this firmware patch because if not, there will be some third party programmer that will come up with a script where you can run this on a PS5. As for pairing to the Switch, there's no Switch back there. Give me a second. Oh my gosh, it's a Nintendo Switch. And I'm wearing different clothes. Then I got a haircut. It's almost like it's another day. Weird. Oh, I forgot how bad the Switch looks and feels docked. So this is my buddy Switch. He is a Facebook streamer, this or tat. Check him out, link in the description below. And this thing paired up absolutely no problem with the Nintendo Switch. There's zero input lag or delay. He also included his controller here. It is a pro style controller. It's the Power A, which has two paddles on the back, but they feel kind of flimsy and they're raised up out of the shell. And everything just feels kind of cheap and chintzy. The buttons are closer together and have kind of a hollow. The buttons are kind of close together and have kind of a hollow cheap feel. Yeah. 
Not to mention you have this cheap, scratchy, hard plastic here. Uh, so, I mean, obviously grabbing the big, big one, which again, the naming convention. But uh, yeah, this feels so much better with the soft touch material. The paddle design on this just feels amazing. So I do have to say, if you own a Switch and a PC, this is definitely, definitely a recommended pickup for me personally, as I do think for the price of 50 US dollars, this thing looks and feels tremendous. I don't see any long-term durability issues arising from this. And I do feel like the fact that it can be recognized by the PS5 and actually connect with the actual name of the device, it's only a matter of time before there's a firmware update that gets it actually usable on the PS5 wirelessly. That's gonna do it guys. If you enjoyed this video, liking it helps it to get seen by more people, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I greatly, greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of news in the gaming community, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. And I will see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna enjoy some Zelda, Link's Breath is Wild. I think that was the name of the game. Zelda's Breath is Sticky, something like that.